So what's the plan? The only way this is going to work is if we imitate each other exactly. It's got to be perfect, right? So good that even my own mother wouldn't know the difference. Not for heaven's sake. Let him finish. This sounds fun. First order of business, 7.30am, run with Amy. Amy's got a mind like clockwork. She is a stickler for punctuality. If you're even a minute late, she'll suspect something's up. Right. And if I am, she'd automatically think I'm an imposter. You don't know Amy. Jack loves Amy. I do not. Can we get back to this, please? Let's review the itinerary. 7.30am, run with Amy. 7.50, visit coffee shop. 7.52, order skinny caramel macchiato, no phone. 7.53, consume beverage. 7.55, fall asleep on train track. 8.15, buy Molly a new mobile phone. OK, now he's messing around. So, I meet Amy. How do I explain what happened yesterday? First, you'll have to put her completely at ease. She's a bit of a detective or something, so don't be all nervous, all right? She can smell fear. Just be super casual. OK. So I'll just go up to her and say... Morning, sweetheart. Pardon? Dad, no. Try and bring it into the 21st century, yeah? Look, just distract her somehow. Talk about something she loves. We're out of cereal. Sorry. I finished it off last night. I'll pick something up later, yeah? Focus. Look, Amy's a big theatre nerd. She could talk for hours about various plays she's into. It's incredibly boring. She's also been saying she fancies a holiday. Distract her with that. Holiday, theatre, got it. So, that's Shakespeare. He's a bit good, isn't he? What was the deal with that piss at the other day? How come you're hanging out with fat, middle-aged blokes? He was just having a rough day, that's all. Why do you think he looks like a pisshead? So, are we going for this run or what? I always think of him as meat and potatoes. You know, no fuss. Some people say that's a rare quality. Keep up if you can. Wow, I feel great. I've not been able to run like this in years. You spent enough time on the treadmill. Yeah. I guess that is pretty vain, isn't it? Well, you're no know, role model, but I wouldn't beat yourself up too bad. What do you mean about me not being a good role model? Enough with the chit-chat. You're giving me a stitch. Come on. Let me hear it. What is it that makes me such a bad person? Bad person? You're harmless. I just said you don't set a good example. You're just like me. You're a total workaholic and a massive geek. A massive geek? Not too bad. Yeah, I can live with that. All right, Jack. That was great. I feel fantastic. So, when can we do this again? What's going on with you? You all right? Sorry. I don't know what came over me. Call you tomorrow? No, it's fine. I'll call you. Take care of yourself, okay, Jack? We'd better get our story straight for Shaz. Shaz is great. You're going to love her. Hang on, what do you mean, story? Oh, well, um, I had to make something up on the spot yesterday. From now on, we're related. Huh? Welcome to the family, Jack. I was just talking to John about his mysterious nephew. All right, lad. You know, I don't tell you this nearly enough, but you are definitely the handsome one in the family. Hiya, Shaz. Uh, it is Sh Shaz, right? I think, I think John must have told me that. So, now your family secret's out, I'm dying to know more. What was it like having John as an uncle? I don't want to get all soppy, but John... I don't know where I'd be without you. That's quite all right, Jack. 
I'm glad you've turned into such an athletic, creative, fiercely intelligent young man. So how long's Jack in town for? Oh, not long. For the foreseeable. Just a few days, really. Better get used to him. He's going to be around a while. Nah. I'll be out of your hair before too long. Sounds like you both need to get your stories straight. Where were you before you came to London, Jack? Oh, you know, staying at home, playing computer games. He was in Cambodia. Wow. Cambodia? Yeah, he was working for the UN. You know, peacekeeping. Noble stuff. OK, that's enough. He's done well for himself. Now he runs this high-tech startup you see selling solar-powered submarines to the super-rich. Yeah, I almost can't believe it's true. Well, that all sounds fascinating. I hope life isn't too slow-paced for you while you slum it with us. Well, I'm going to head off, John. Don't be too late. Cheerio. See you later. She's nice. Submarines. Too much. So what is it that you do for a job anyway? Are you a taxidermist? A taxidermist? No, I'm, I'm, I'm a creative. I work in design. I'm an artist. Taxidermists are people who take animals and pull out their insides and make them stand up and things. It's awesome. And what does a creative do when he's at home? Sounds made up. I'm a software artist. You know, video games. That's so cool. Oh, thanks. Yeah, not, not traditional games like shooters or RPGs or free-to-play stuff. My team makes empathy games. It's art, really. You know, games which say something about the human condition. Cutting-edge stuff. If you say so. I played this game where you had to run really fast over a road. Only I didn't, and I got hit by a train. I died. There's one we have at work on a screensaver where you navigate through a maze. Did you do that one? Uh, no. That wasn't me. Did you make that one with the train? No. No, I didn't. Sorry. You should have been a taxidermist. So where do you work? Superfab. It's not far from your office, actually. Are you having me on? Is this your real job? Those games aren't going to make themselves, John. Dad, can you put me in one of Jack's video games? Could I put Molly in your game, Jack? Is that even possible? Let's just try to get through the first day to begin with, yeah? I'll walk you through it. Don't forget, I need to be taken to school at some point. Yeah, yeah. Now, first you need to find my desk. You can't miss it. It's the one with the robot doing the sick dab. Sneak past Sonia, the receptionist. Avoid any awkward questions. She's a bit dippy, so you shouldn't have any problems there. Well, that's a bit cruel. She sounded nice on the phone. You're mean, Jack. How old are you, anyway? Eight and a half. Good age. Why? Dunno. Hello, stranger. You look well rested. Uh, thanks. You do too. Thanks. Get in there, Jack, my son. Good morning! Derek's in a good mood. Who's Derek? What? Jack, 
sure you're not still feeling ill? I work with him, don't I? Yeah, he's your boss. Hey, you never told me how your holiday was. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, yeah, um, it was fun. Turned into a bit of a piss-up with the lads, though, to be honest. While trekking in Nepal? OK, well, I've got to run. Keep on keeping on. Uh, bye. So, what do I do when I get there? It's Monday. That means sprint planning. You're going to coordinate with your team on their tasks for the week. Dad's no good with stuff like that. Molly's right. I don't think anyone would follow me into battle. It's simple, trust me. Joan is working on modelling the last of the cream cakes for Mrs Clapton's tea shop. Letitia's putting the finishing touches to the AI for the retirement home scene with the shell shock veteran. And Tobias is writing up the design for the interactive funeral procession. And Maya is midway through implementing rumble support. And this is a computer game? Video game. Your game sounds bad, Jack. It's about embodying the experience of someone who's witnessed death and is coming to terms with their own mortality. It's poetic. It'll make you cry. Jonah Cakes, Letitia Shell Shock, Tobias Funerals, Maya Rumble. See? You're a natural. Uh, hello. Um, good weekends, everyone? Get up to anything interesting? Okay, um, let's see. So I'm supposed to go around everyone and check what you're all working on. So, um, Jonah. You are modeling cream cakes, aren't you? I'll take the silence as an agreement. Okay, Letitia. You're doing something with AI. No, no, IA for retirement homes. Yeah, that sounds right. Okay, Tobias, I believe you're looking at a funeral procession. Good luck with that. I'm going to assume that's correct. And finally, Maya, you're rumbling, rumbling. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's right. Look, even I can tell this meeting is a bit pointless. I mean, I remembered what you were all working on, but I'm sure you already knew that anyway. I guess what you're really looking for is a pep talk, isn't it? Some words of encouragement. I'm sorry. I thought I could do this, but none of this comes naturally to me. You all look like nice, bright people. You don't need to listen to an old fart like me. I'm sorry that I can't give you anything more inspiring. Maybe I'll just leave you with the advice that my dad gave to me on my 18th birthday. Keep your head down. Don't take unnecessary risks. Stay out of debt. Cheers. Come on, baby. Don't fail me now. Give me that Derek loving. Yes, yes, yes! This is ridiculous. What the hell? Headshot! Come on, Jack. Let's have our catch up. Okay. Jack, I'm loving that TV series you recommended. Did you catch the latest episode? What did you think of the chapel scene? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, I'm glad you're enjoying it. That 
The Lord forgives, I do not bit. And then he pulled out the machine gun and was all... <laughs> blew that bugger's chin clean off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was my favourite bit too. Jack, I'll cut right to it. Your team is doing fantastic work. Really outstanding. But the publishers over the next month. Surprise visit. You know how these things go. Is that good? It'll be a shit show. I need you and your guys to crunch for the next few weeks. Obviously, we'll take care of pizzas, take away, whatever you guys need. You mean work overtime? It'll be good fun, won't it? The team hard at it, down in the trenches together. We'll keep any seven-day stints to a minimum, but if you could have your boys free up the next few weekends, that'd be great. Hang on. There's no way I'm working weekends for a silly computer game. Jack, the company expects it of you. And you don't want to let the others down. I, I, I mean, I'd, I'd love the overtime pay, don't get me wrong, but... I can't give up that time right now. Overtime pay? You're getting a little off message, Jack. As a line manager, I need you to set an example. I'll set an example, all right? Bloody cheek. Don't raise your voice to me. I expect the team to pull together, to show some passion. Yeah, well, how about I show you something else? Hey, Dad! Oh, hey, John. Jack's got something to tell you. Yeah, now, now before I go into details, it's important you know that a lot of your colleagues were really impressed with how I handled things today. Jack got fired. What? No, 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 I didn't get fired. Uh, Molly, don't tell your dad that. OK, well, well, maybe I had to get a little bit fired. Told you. Between you and me, I think that Clive fellow overstepped his authority. I mean, I was just trying to give him some friendly advice. This is a disaster. It's all good. we still got my job, and no offence, but it pays better too. I'll sort your pay slip. Okay. Here's the thing. Uh-oh. Everything okay? Something go wrong? I've got something to tell you. Wait. What? You got fired as well? Pretty eventful day, right? Oh, this is not happening. What a nightmare. Oh, but it was all gravy when you lost my job. Do you two need some privacy? Very cute. Okay, that's it. I'm going to demolish a cheesecake. Who wants some? I want two slices. Hey, that's my figure you're ruining there. But yeah, I'll have a quarter. <laughs> a quarter? You'll get what's left, mate. Why don't you just go to the doctor? Well, Molly's got a point, John. I mean, we can't be the first case of something like this. I just can't think I would be treated seriously. You're not putting mustard on that, are you? You've got Jack's allergies now, Dad. Why'd you have to be allergic to all the good stuff? Sorry, mate. Which one comes after Anne Boleyn? Anne of Cleves. Catherine Hepburn. It can't hurt to go to the GP about this. You're both wrong. To be honest, I don't really know what a GP could do, but it's worth a shot. Maybe they could refer us to someone who specialises in the mind. Like a brain surgeon? Yeah, or a psychologist or something. Like that shot near the tube station? Hooked on a healing? No, no, love, you're thinking of a psychic. Bunch of con artists. Hang on, though. Molly might be onto something there. Yeah, I might be onto something. Desperate times demand desperate measures. We shouldn't be closed off to any potential situation. Fine. Add it to the list. It says Abilin was beheaded f for a fornication. What's fornication? That's one for you, I think, Jack. Fortification? Well, it's some... It's, uh, does anyone want anything from the shop?
The sea tonight, yeah, Mum? With any luck, we'll be back in our own bodies by dinner time. Bye, Dad. See you later, Jack. So, I've got a list. Uh, we've got an appointment with your GP, Dr Aji Bolla, and then we're seeing that therapist I found online. Aren't you forgetting something? Yeah. Yeah, we are going to have our auras read too. I hadn't forgotten. You know, there is one good thing that you got going for you. Am I going to want to hear this? I love the way you say bastard. It's got a nice tombra. Bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Go on, let, let's see you say it for comparison. Are we really doing this? Okay, fine. Bastard. Yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a bit thin. Sorry, mate. John, good to see you. And who is this we have with us? Oh, hello, Doctor. This is my nephew, Jack. Pleased to meet you, Jack. So, how can I help you both? How's your heart, John? My heart? There's nothing wrong with my heart, is there? No, 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 it's, it's not that. It's a bit of a delicate matter. Don't worry. There isn't much you could say which could shock me at this point. I wouldn't be too sure about that. Well, what do you know about living outside of your own body? You mean like a feeling of disassociation? Not being in control? Yes, exactly. Okay, the truth is, the truth is, I'm him, and he's me. Our bodies got switched somehow. I'm John. And I'm Jack. Fellas, you realise April Fool's Day was months ago. So there's nothing you can do for us? John, come back in two months, as we agreed for your regular checkup. Jack, it was nice to meet you. Well... Looks like I'm going to have to find a new GP. OK, burnt that bridge. What's next on the list? Ah, psychologist. Should be interesting. What did the doctor mean when he brought up that thing about your heart? Have you been ill? Well, I had a mild heart attack a few months back. I mean, it sounds worse than it is. Just spent a couple of days in hospital, and now I just have to watch my cholesterol. Pretty normal, really. It's, it's nothing that serious. Jesus, John, that's about as serious as it gets. I try not to think of it like that. Right, well, look, no more junk food from now on. I'll cook tonight. Well, you haven't seen me in the kitchen, have you? I mean, you know, I don't want to brag, but I'm like a culinary wizard. I can't take all the credit. It's the French jeans. Right. That would actually be pretty nice. C'est la vie, Jean. Eh? C'est la vie. Right. Okay. Hello. You're both related, is that right? Yeah, he's my nephew. Okay. Well, nice to meet you both. Before we get started, I'd like to go through the different options we have available today. Okay? Sure. So my family therapy package starts at £250 per hour. Bloody daylight robbery! Well, on the bright side, you know where we're going next, don't you? All right, lads. Can I help with anything? Actually, yeah. My friend here is going to explain it to you. Isn't that right, Jack? All right, listen, uh, sorry, what's your name? Ron. Right, listen, Ron, we have got a little bit of an odd one here, but by the looks of this place, maybe it's right up your street. I'm listening. OK, so the long and the short of it, well, <laughs> we've swapped bodies. Me and him. My next-door neighbour. I know it sounds crazy, but it's actually the truth. Ever heard of anything like this before? Body swapping? OK, he thinks we're mental. That's perfect! Really? I've read so much about this. You've seen this before? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Seriously? Come on, come to my office. Let's see if we can sort this out. Well, all right.
Here, sit yourself down, lads. I'll be with you in a moment. This where the magic happens? Uh-huh. Must be more common than we thought. Oh, yeah. The world's definitely not what you think, lads, let me tell you. So, what happens next, then? How's this all work? Like, you must have heard about the secret alien portals that are buried under London. Uh, no. Look, is there some sort of medicine we can take, or...? Oh, mate, you should look it up. Seriously. Everyone knows about it. It's not even a conspiracy at this stage. Are we sure about this guy? One second, lads. I'm almost ready. Okay. For God's sake! All right! Uh, and welcome back to another episode of Behind the Curtain, brought to you by Harvey's Razors, the closest killer shaver man can get. Uh, now, before we get into today's topic, remember to share this video with your friends and smash that like button. Okay, so today we have two special guests who are here to talk about their tragic tale of how they swapped brains. Jack, John, why don't you introduce yourselves? Okay, they're gone. Well, that's everyone we have booked in. We're gonna have to think really hard what our next approach is, Jack. I'm kind of running out of ideas. I've got one. All right, go on. Up. Oh, I don't know. I totally bought into that last guy. I thought that was it, you know? I'm such a mob. Gotta admit, you had me for a moment. Seems like we have to up our game next time, Jack. Yeah. You know, I can't actually remember the last time I went to the pub. Piss off. Don't believe you. You're like the kind of guy who was born in a pub. But you grew up playing the fruit machines, blindfolded, whilst eating pork scratchings, downing warm ale. <laughs> Maybe when I was younger. Unfortunately, not really the best environment for an eight-year-old, is it? Yeah, probably. <laughs> Can I ask you something? Of course. I mean, not that this is any of my business or anything, but... Where's Molly's mum? You never mentioned her. I'll have to get a few more beers down me before we go into all of that. <laughs> OK. Hey, well, look. I've got a piano here. You play? Mate, do I play? Okay, I'll continue playing this. You just join in when you want. What is it? I don't know. Just making it up as I go along. Come on, you play the top line, man. Just, just make something up. Yeah, well, I hope we're not pissing everyone off in here. No, no, that's why it's here. Come on. Come on, you've got an audience now. Just, just play something. Fine, okay. I'm a little bit just here, but I'll give it a go.
That was awesome. You're great at the piano, mate. Absolute legend. Looks like this one's for you. Cheers. Oh, crap. Come over to my place a moment, yeah? Everything okay? Yeah, yeah, sure. We should just, uh, just check and see if any of your posters got delivered by mistake. What's this? A bank statement? I'm cleaned out. How am I going to pay for this place without any cash? Without a job? I guess this was always going to happen. How much is it a month? Two thousand a month. Could crowdsource it, I suppose. Jesus. For this one-bed place? Well, I guess there's only one thing for it. How long are these boxes going to be here? Until I can afford to put them in storage. That's all right, isn't it? Can I look for your stuff? No. The long and short of it is that one of us needs to get a job. These bills aren't going to sort themselves out. Yeah, no offence, but I'm never going to get another games job if I have to use your CV. 25 years working in the same office. Who'd hire me? Why don't you get your old job back, Dad? Yeah, Shazzy was saying I haven't found anyone to cover your casework. Well, there is actually an opening, but it's for a senior position. I can't just waltz in there with Jack's CV and expect a job. I bet we can blag him. Come on, I'll write the cover letter. You know, biggie up a bit. You're going to have to sort your look out, Dad. No one's going to hire you if you dress like that. Well, he's right. Got to get you spruced up and all dapper. 90% of acing and interviews all about wearing a sharp suit. Shit. <sighs> ah, it's all right. 